Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Arkham Horror the card game where we're currently playing the Dunwich Legacy campaign. We're about to start our seventh scenario even though it's called scenario six because uh, if you remember scenario one had two parts to it 1a and 1b. So scenario six where doom awaits awaits us. So we'll crack on with that now. First of all we've got to do a little narrative so I'll just read this out. Scenario 6, where doom awaits. You awaken to the sound of screeching. Fearing the worst, you grab your equipment and head out into the streets of Dunwich. As soon as you step outside, you sense a foulness in the cold night air. An awful pungent smell that can scarcely be described, and a heaviness to the atmosphere that makes it difficult to breathe. The citizens of Dunwich have sealed their doors, and the town feels quiet and lonesome. In the distance, a faint glow emanates from a hilltop above the village. You know of this hill from both your interactions with Zebulon and Armitage's records. It is called Sentinel Hill. The tales speak of satanic rites being performed there. Rites in which great ritual pyres light up the night sky while the ground rumbles furiously below. Flocks of whippoorwills perch on the rooftops of the village around you watching ominously as you climb inside Zebulon's old and beaten up truck. As you drive towards Sentinel Hill, more screeching fills the sky with an awful pitch that is painful to your ears. Everything you have read and experienced in Dunwich has led to this. If the foul ritual Seth seeks to perform has anything to do with what Armitage and his colleagues prevented several months back, it involves the favour of an ancient creature, yogg Sothoth. Failing to stop this ritual may spell doom, not only for Dunwich, but for the entire world. <laughs> now, what we've got to do now is check the campaign log. If Naomi has the investigators back, then we read part one. Well, she doesn't have our back because we didn't rescue the owner of the Clover Club. So what we've got to do is proceed directly to set up. Now, as you can see, I've prepped a bit. So uh, let's go through setup. First of all, we've got to, hang on, let me get my pointing implement. Here we are. We have to gather all the cards from the following encounter sets. Where Doom awaits, Beast Thralls, Sorcery, Bishop's Thralls, Striking Fear and Ancient Evils. They're all here. And uh, we put the base of the hill, the Ascending Path and Sentinel Peak into play. So we've got the base of the hill here. We've got two ascending paths here for the time being. Oh no, one ascending path. I'll tell you what's just behind it in a moment. We've got the ascending path and we've got Sentinel Peak here. Altered path and diverging path. You'll find out about those in a second. We've got to move, remove one copy of diverging path from the game at random. So here's the diverging paths of which we've got one, two, three, four. So. Let's give him a quick shuffle and a cut. And what we'll do is we'll remove the one off the bottom. So that's disappeared over there. So we've now got three diverging paths. We've got to do the same for the altered path, I believe. We do. Do, 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 do. And that and we'll whiz that over there as well so that's three of those have i done that the right way round let me just quickly check yes we remove one copy and keep the other three that's correct we put seth bishop aside out of play he is he is over here that's seth he's over there now, based on our difficulty level, you add the following chaos tokens to the chaos bag for the remainder of the campaign. Now, we are standard. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put the minus five into the chaos bag. So, there we go. Let's have a look at the easy and standard. Here we are. So, if we get a skull token, then that is minus one, but it's minus three instead if we are at an altered location. So, we'll have to look out for that keyword. The Cowled Cultist, 
we reveal another token. Cancel the effects and icons of each skill card committed to this test. That is bad. So say you've put a load of cards and uh, skills, still skill cards and what have you, and then you pull this. Whatever cards you've put down do not count. You just reveal the other token and it's just like a flat test. So that is a really bad one. The broken tablet, that's minus two, but it will be minus four if we get into agenda two. And our elder thing is minus X. Discard the top two cards of your deck. X is the total printed cost of those discarded cards. So that could be anything. So we'll pop that over here. So that is what we're up against in the token bag. So what is next? Right, oh yes. Depending on the following circumstances, a different version of Act 2 should be used in the scenario. Each other version of Act 2 is removed from the game. We check the campaign log. If the investigators restored Silas Bishop, use Act 2, Ascending the Hill, version 1. Well, we didn't, so we don't use that one. If the above is not true, we check the campaign log again. If the investigators fail to recover the Necronomicon, or if the Necronomicon was stolen, use Act 2, Ascending the Hill, Version 2. Well, if you remember, Daisy has still got the Necronomicon, so it's not that. If neither of the above are true, then we use Act 2, Ascending the Hill, version 3, which is the one we've got. So that is there, all lined up, ready to go. Talking of checking the campaign log, we've got to check it again. For each brood of Yogg-Sothoth that escapes into the wild, add one doom to Agenda 1A. So there's Agenda 1A, we'll go through it shortly, but if you remember, three of the broods got away. So as you can see, I've put three Doom on there. There is nine on the die, because it should have been 12, and we're down to nine already. Okay, so we've done that. We check the campaign log once again. If the investigators put Silas Bishop out of his misery, and we did, Remnants of the creature's body have mutated and grown at Sentinel Hill. You know what? You just should have burnt him. What on earth were they doing? But anyway, they didn't. Put one conglomeration of spheres enemy from the hideous abominations encounter set into play at the ascending path. Shuffle the rest of that set into the encounter deck. This set is indicated by the following icon. So, there we are. That is what was under here the ascending path and we have a conglomeration of spheres which is the remains of good old silas so we'll pop him back there so i think that is it for the setup yes we just got to shuffle all the encounter cards and we are ready to rock and roll so i'm just going to go away for a short while we're going to shuffle all these cards going to set it up a bit as regards the actual map and uh, We'll get ready to go. I shall see you shortly. And I'm back. So here we are with the setup. We'll go through the base of the hill shortly, but it is attached to three diverging paths. We'll be picking those randomly, flicking them over, and we will be trying to get to the ascending path up here, because obviously we want to get to the top of the hill where Seth is. And uh, on the way, obviously, it's not going to make it very easy for us. So we've got diverging paths, and then once we get to the ascending path, we have got altered paths going up to the peak itself, where this diabolical ritual is taking place. All right, so I think first things first, let's have a look at our agenda. So we're on agenda 1A. It has got 12 doom, but remember we're on 9 now, because we had to take 3 off because three broods got away. So Agenda 1A is calling forth the old ones. As you approach Sentinel Hill, you hear ancient Latin rites bellowed across the night. The time for action has come. If you cannot stop the sorcerers in Dunwich, who knows what terrors they might unleash upon the world. So that is our agenda. Put that over here. And our act is the path to the hill at 1A. A vibrant arcane energy fills the air with a bone-rattling chill. 
the energy swirls along the crushed trail before you and seeps down several other paths before disappearing. Objective. When the investigators have collected the requisite number of clues, they must immediately spend them and advance this act. We need two clues per investigator, so that will be four clues required. So we'll pop that in there. So we need four clues. Okay, so both of our investigators are at the base of the hill. Remember, we've got the ascending path, but it has a conglomeration of, sp of spheres at it because we actually destroyed Silas. Now, the conglomeration of spheres... See, it's pretty nice. Fortunately, it hasn't got a great combat, so that's okay. But it does have six health, and it is four to evade. It's a monster and an abomination. Prey will be the lowest willpower, so it's going to be going after Jenny. And it's a hunter, so it's going to be coming after us. Forced. After you perform an attack against the conglomeration of spheres using a melee card, discard that card. Dun, dun, dun. So if you attack it, for example, with a machete, you'd have to get rid of it. It does one health damage and one sanity damage. If you remember, we saw these in the Clover Club. So there you go. There is another one that is now in the encounter deck. And there is a lurker, I think. Because they are part of this particular series of cards. And we've got to put them in. So that starts on the ascending path. Uh, we've got the three diverging paths, we'll flip those over randomly when we get to them. The whole idea is we've got to have a look at these paths, gather some clues. Once we get four clues then we can get to the ascending path. And uh, all the while we've got the conglomeration of spheres to deal with. Not to mention any other encounter cards that will come along during our fun time at Sentinel Hill. Okay, so I think that's set up as far as the map goes. What we've got to talk about now is we have to talk about our investigators. We are taking Agnes Baker and Jenny Barnes. We haven't used them for a bit. Um, if you recall, they failed miserably on the Essex County Express. So they both have across space and time, which is a weakness that they gained, unfortunately. So we'll put that there. They've got the usual weaknesses and everything in there. The changes that I've made in the interim is Jenny has used her adaptable card and she got herself a 32 Colt, which she used to swap out for the baseball bat. And that should be very useful against the conglomeration of spheres. So that's why I've done that. This is not a melee weapon, it's a ranged weapon. The baseball bat was ranged. So we took 32 Colt. We've also took Cheap Shot which is a trick, it's an event, it's got a um, strength icon, agility icon, keyword fight, add your agility value to your skill value for this attack. If you succeed by two or more, automatically evade the attacked enemies. Aim for the eyes, they told me. Aim for the eyes, boo! So, <laughs> so cheap shot, they are, it's uh, Minsk, Minsk card, Minsk the Ranger. Go for the eyes! Boo! So there we go. Um, got those two and we've spent one of her experience points and we've upgraded Leo De Luca, the Louisiana Lion. Now costs five instead of six. Uh, he's still got his intellect icon, ally criminal. You may take an additional action this turn. I think some of these may have gone up as well. I can't remember. Can't remember exactly. I was born in Mississippi, but Louisiana sounded better. So two health and uh, two sanity soak. So, and he is an ally. Brings me on to one quick thing, the esoteric formula. Remember the esoteric formula? We got it during the last scenario. Um, now it does tell us during the last scenario to get rid of the powder of Ibn Ghazi, but it doesn't say get rid of the esoteric formula. Now I think you probably do get rid of it. So I am gonna put these to one side. But I've looked online and it doesn't say that you get rid of these anywhere. So I'm wondering, do you get rid of them? The reason why I would like to keep them is because during a fight, we can use willpower instead of strength, which is absolutely great for Agnes. Get plus two willpower for the attack. Woo! -hoo! For each clue on the attacked enemy. Now, 
this is what's making me feel that I can't use this because there's no way we can get a clue on the attacked enemy. But that is just a bonus. So you might just lose that bonus by using it out of the scenario. Use this ability only on an abomination enemy. And yes, the conglomeration of spheres is an abomination enemy. So I'm not going to put them in the decks. Let me know if I can use these. As I say, I've looked online and it doesn't say I cannot. And I can't say anything, I can't see anything on here where it says it is just for undimensioned and unseen only. Because if we can keep these, we're going to keep them. And it's going to be extremely useful for Agnes, assuming that she pulls it out of a deck, of course. So if I can keep them, what I'll do is I'll just reshuffle them in. All of you out there are going to go out, going to go mad now, going, you can't reshuffle a deck once you've done it. Tough, I'm doing it. All right. Tough, get over it. We've chatted about this before, a deck of cards, it's like quantum mechanics, all the stuff. If I can use them, I'm putting them back in. If I can't use them, then I won't have to reshuffle it, will I? And to be honest, during this particular LCG, the Arkham, car the Arkham Horror card game, you're shuffling your bleeding decks all the time anyway, so I don't see what the problem is. So anyway, let us know if I can actually use those. I'm not going to put them in now because I have a feeling that you're probably going to come back and say, no, no, you can't. But it does not say anywhere that you cannot. And where Doom Away, oh, sorry, Undimensioned and Unseen was specific in saying get rid of the powder of Ibn Ghazi. It did not say get rid of these. So uh, I'd be interested in your thoughts on that particular one. But as it stands, I'll just put them to one side. Um, more controversy. Right, Agnes, what has she done? Well, she's actually... Oh, did I mention what I'd got rid of? Uh, cheap shot. When I took cheap shot, I got rid of... Um, da, 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 what did I get? Fine clothes. One copy of fine clothes. And obviously Leo De Luca replaced the old Leo De Luca. Now, the only card, extra card that uh, Agnes has got is the key of East. Now, everybody, loads of people watching this are now going to go, the card's broken, it's ridiculously overpowered. And I've only got one thing to say about that, and that is, I hope so. <laughs> I really do hope it is overpowered, because I have a feeling we're going to need it. So that's it. Whether it's overpowered or not, it's currently in the game. She had five experience to spend, and she's bought it, and she's having it. So we've got the key of East. What did I get rid of for that now? Oh, I got rid of something or other. I can't partic Oh, I got rid of one copy of Storm of Spirits, I think. So Storm of Spirits spell, I got rid of one copy, and I took the key of East. And it was expensive. It did cost me three, uh, sorry, five experience. It's going to cost me three resources to put it out on the you know, into her amulet slot, and yeah, so it is strong card, it's very strong card, and I hope it's, <laughs> I really hope it's going to help us win this particular game. Okay, so we've got that, so plenty of you, plenty there for everybody to argue about in the comments, which is just the way I like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly shuffle these, and uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to pull our starting hand. And we're going to be ready to rock and roll. Oh, one thing to mention is Jenny Barnes is obviously got indebted. So she only starts with three resources, not five, which is a bit of a bummer. Because if she gets a good card, like a weapon, we, uh, we would pretty much like her to get a weapon extremely early due to that conglomeration of spheres. So anyway, we've given these a quick shuffle. We will now give them a cut and we'll pop those there. And we'll do the same with these. I bet you've missed me crap shuffle. You will see that in the two months I've been off, I have not been practicing my shuffling. I've been doing other things. So, Here we go. And I've got to give them a good shuffle because obviously I was updating the decks and things. So I did sort of put them in a non-random order so I could easily check what they had and what they didn't have. 
and what I was swapping um, in and out just to make sure that I had all the relevant and required cards so there we go I think that'll do right well Jenny it looks like our lead investigator so we'll pull her cards out first her first card is calling in favours not particularly don't think we need that choose ally you that's it you control I don't control any yet so we've got calling in favours which will possibly go back in on a mulligan hard knocks we'll keep that and whoop pick two up there I'm still picking two up we're all stuck together liquid courage we may or may not get rid of that and think on your feet what we need is a weapon next up this is the last card liquid courage we're going to chuck everything back apart from hard knocks and what we're going to try and do is we are going to try and find some sort of weapon leo de luca well he's good emergency cash i'll do we need a weapon opportunist we're in big trouble because we've got cat burglar as well so yes we do not have a weapon which is bad news we desperately need agnes to get one now otherwise we're going to be a very short game with the conglomeration of spheres so we've got a cat burglar and leo de luca so we've got a couple of potential allies put them there We've got Hard Knocks, Opportunist and Emergency Cash. I won't put them up there because that means that they are in play and they're not. So we'll shuffle all these back in. Yeah, that's bad news. I, I wanted, I obviously wanted to get the 32 Colt there or to get her twin 45s. And that is not the case, unfortunately. Put those there. So we've got Leo De Luca, Cat Burglar, Hard Knox, Tudist is a skill, we'll put that down here, and Emergency Cash is an event, so we'll put that down there. So, yeah, not a brilliant draw, not a brilliant draw. Alright, so, we have done that for... Jenny Barnes. So next up, it is Agnes. Oh, we've already shuffled, haven't we? Sod it. Right. Okay. Come on. Something useful. Unexpected courage. Scrying could be useful. Lucky could be useful. Survival instinct. And the key of ease. We'll keep that. <laughs> But these others, I'm not so sure about. Um, survival instinct. No, we'll get rid. Lucky. Oh, I really want to keep that. I really want to keep that. Bob. I'll have a think about that. Scrying, useful, but we really need some unexpected courage as well. Oh, I'm going to have to chuck those, aren't I? Just desperately trying to find some sort of weapon. So, three cards. Emergency cash. Yeah, we'll keep lucky. Fearless. Oh. And Peter Sylvester, at least he's good. Yes, we found absolutely no, <laughs> no weapons. And we've got a conglomeration of spheres coming after us. Oh, we're in bad shape. We are in bad shape. Okay, right. So we've done that. We'll pop that over here. Put the altered paths there. We're not quite using them yet. Right, so there we go. Let's set these up. Key of East. That is good stuff. Uh, emergency cash. That's fearless. Fearless is a skill. We'll put that there. Emergency cash. 
Oh, good old Pete. Peter. And Lucky, which is an event as well. We'll put that down there. Okay, well, that's appalling. We've got some good cards, but uh, we haven't got any weapons whatsoever. Um, maybe a case of we'll have to sort of zoom off to the diverging paths, have a look at those, because that'll mean at least we do get some, a little grace. We'll get a little grace before the actual conglomeration of spheres comes after us. Um, fortunately, it's going to come after um, Jenny, because she's got the lowest willpower, and she's got the best chance of evading it but of course it's got an evasion of four so it's still going to be difficult so that's bad news okay is there anything else we need to do before we start i don't think so i'll go and upload this and then we'll do turn number one okie okay <laughs> And welcome back to round 68. As we're at the start of a scenario, we go straight to the investigation phase. Just a couple of things that I got wrong. <laughs> First of all, we've obviously got to have a look at the base of the hill, which I forgot to do. The other thing was I, <laughs> I shuffled back in the other Leo De Luca. I had two copies of Leo De Luca. I should have only had one, which was this one, the one that I showed you. I said I'd upgraded him. And then, obviously, when I was pulling out before, I pulled out the original one. I had one extra card in my deck. So what I've done is I've swapped him around and I've reshuffled them. I'm not redoing the whole draw uh, because I haven't got the time. Anybody who watched my channel update, I just don't have the time. I've already uploaded it and edited it. My mistake, we're just going to have to live with it. Got rid of the original one that should have been replaced by this one. And we'll just do the swap. So there we go. That was my error. Sorry about that. But uh, as I say, I'm not redoing it all. We'll just have to stick with what we've got. Um, I have took it out, though, of the deck and reshuffled it. Other than that, obviously, base of the hill. Both of our investigators are there, so we get to have a look. So base of the hill, location, Dunwich, Sentinel Hill. The long slope of Sentinel Hill rises before you, cresting in the jagged edges of Sentinel Peak. And those are all your connections. And they're all connected to all of these, what is it, diverging paths down here. So we'll flip it over because we're there. So base of the hill. It's got a shroud of three. There are no clues there, so we're going to have to move away to find clues. The location is, funnily enough, Dunwich and Sentinel Hill. We do not have the altered keyword, so that comes into play when we start pulling tokens. I think, what is it? It's the skull token, is it? One of them, anyway. But we don't need to worry about that because we don't have the altered keyword. Base of the hill is connected to each copy of Diverging Path, hence it's like the connectors are there. As an action we can investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, put a random set aside Diverging Path into play. Limit once per round. And we can resign here if we want to. This is more than I signed up for. We're not going to resign. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Skip the next two seconds if you don't want to know. Right. Don't resign during this scenario, otherwise the game ends. Yep, yeah, that's it for the campaign, you lose. Yogg Sothoth eats everyone. Right, hello, welcome back. We're not going to resign, so forget about that. Okay, we will put base of the hill back there. Now, I've got all these connectors on, but what we'll do is when we do move to one of these you know, when we do investigate and get to move to one of these paths, I'll just roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that'll be the one we flip over. Okie dokie. All right. So, that is that. We've done base of the hill. We are now ready to begin the investigation phase properly. And our lead investigator is Jenny Barnes. So she's going to go first. What is she going to do for her first action? Well, for her first action... What she is going to do is she is going to use emergency cash. She needs resources. So we'll get rid of that. And we will get ourselves three resources. 
which we're not actually going to put down we're going to keep them in our hand because we're going to add another two and she's going to pay five to get Leo De Luca in play as her second action so we'll pop that down there Leo De Luca comes into play and yes he will give her an extra action so that action we just took away we'll just give it back in fact we'll use a we'll use a different color shall we that's always a good idea so we'll use a different color so we know it's Leo De Luca so we'll use this yellow one so we've still got Leo's action because he's now in play two actions left what are we gonna do well we only have one resource I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a card we need a weapon so we'll use Leo's action to do that come on we need a weapon we get manual dexterity it is not a weapon damn it <laughs> but it does give us a couple of agility icons so that's a bit of a bummer now what is going to happen if we leave her where she is? Well, we can't move her. We cannot move her, I don't think, because... Yeah, we've got to investigate and put a diverging path into play before we can move. So... I think we'll keep both of the girls here. She will investigate with her last action. She may as well. She's got an intellect of three. Intellect of three against a shroud of three. Is there anything we can chuck at it? Uh, looking for intellect icons anywhere. I cannot see any intellect icons anywhere. In which case is it worth investigating? Probably not. So what we're going to do is we are going to use her final action to try and get another card and try and get a weapon. Come on. Weapon, please. Yes! 32 Colt. Brilliant. So as soon as we can get that into, um, into her hands, the better. And she can start shooting up that conglomeration of spheres. We're going to be taking some damage, unfortunately. But that's the way it is. And, uh, well, Jenny's going to be taking some damage because that's who it is going to attack. Unfortunately, we weren't able to move. If we'd been able to move, I wanted to get Leo into play, to be honest. If I could have got one of these diverging paths into play and moved her, I would have kept um, Agnes there, because at least Agnes can um, put a damage onto the conglomeration of spheres when she takes a horror. But uh, as it is, it's going to be poor old uh, Jenny that's going to take the hit. So uh, that's a bit of a downer. Never mind. Okay. But if we're going to take a hit, you know, let's take it right at the beginning of the game when we've got full health and full sanity, I think. Right, that is it for Jenny Barnes, which means we move across to Agnes Baker, the lovely Agnes. And what is she going to do? Well, I think for her first action, she is also going to use emergency cash and get herself three lovely resources. So one, two, three, that puts her up to eight. But she's gonna use these three for her second action. And she's going to put, whoop, stuck together. For her second action, yes, yeah, she's gonna put the key of East in play. Let the storm rage. So it costs three. It's got a uh, wild card icon. It has a willpower icon. Item, it's a relic. You get plus one to each of your skills for each horror on the key of East. Forced, when any amount of horror would be placed on you, place one of that horror on the key of East. Forced, when the key of East leaves play, discard the top 10 cards of your deck. So, you know, if it does get discarded, then it's pretty grim. Yeah. But forced, when you have the amount of horror, would be placed on you. Place one of that horror on the key of East, which is fab fantastic. Really good for her, I think. And it'll start doing things like plus one to each of her skills, which will be immense. Imagine, say, we get three horror on this. She'll be a beast. Okay. So we'll put that here. And that cost 
the three and we've still got five left and what we're going to do is we're going to spend another three out of that five and we're going to get Peter in play. He's excellent, he'll give us plus one agility and after the turn ends as a reaction we can heal one horror from Peter Sylvester. The broad shouldered young man exudes a sort of confidence one only finds in youth. So he's really good for getting rid of horror. Yeah, so uh, a bit later on, I mean, we'll find, we'll find horror useful for the key of East. And Agnes has got, and Agnes has got quite a bit of sanity anyway, but there will come a time when we'll start to need healing horror, heal horror and sanity, and we can use Peter. Okay, we'll put him there. Sorry for the slight edit there, had a coughing fit. And that costs three. So one, two, three. There we are. And that is the end of the investigation phase. And yes, laughs, because we are going to move now into the enemy phase. And yes, we do have an enemy on the board. And here we are at the enemy phase. So, conglomeration of spheres, it's a hunter. That means it's going to move, baby. And its prey is the one with the lowest willpower, which is Jenny Barnes, who's only got three. As it's a hunter, it's going to go across. It's going to prey on her. So it's going to move into her threat area. There we go. And it's going to do some damage. It is going to do one horror and one health. But Leo De Luca, he has got two of each. So he's going to stand in the way. And he's going to take one of each there. So there we go. But hopefully what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to get rid of it before we lose Leo De Luca. So that is the enemy phase, the conglomeration of spheres, the remains, the remains of Silas Bishop have come down to attack us. And there we are. I'm sure Jenny and Agnes are just delighted that uh, Daisy and uh, Zoe didn't get rid of him properly because he's now chewing on uh, Leo De Luca. OK, that is it, I think, for the enemy phase. So next up is the upkeep phase. And here we are at the upkeep phase, so let's get all of our actions back. So that's three for Jenny, plus the extra one from Leo. And it's three back for good old Agnes. There she goes. She's got three. Lead investigator is Jenny, so she will get to draw a car. Oh, and because it's Jenny Barnes, I believe she also gets an advantage additional resource as well so we'll have to remember that but first of all the card she gets elusive cost of two an event intellect icon agility icon elusive keyword tactic fast play only during your turn disengage from each enemy engage with you and move to a revealed location with no enemies Ooh, useless at the moment <laughs> I'm afraid that the ascending path is unrevealed and all of these are unrevealed but if we have, do, 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 yes, that is a pity, but hopefully it'll come in later on. So yeah, if we've managed to reveal one of these, you could just do a quick runner, but uh, I'm sure it'll come in at some point. So that is a event, pop that there. She gets two resources because she's Jenny Barnes. So she gets the extra one. And I think that is it for her. So we need to pull a card for Agnes. And Agnes gets another Peter Sylvester, the big man on campus. That's cool. We could let, could let this Peter bite the dust and then his twin brother can help us. So you've already seen Peter, so I'll just put him up here. And she gets a resource as well. 
Okay, so I think that is it for the upkeep phase. Is there anything I have forgotten? <clears throat> I don't think so. Right, so you have to excuse me a moment. Sorry about that. Another minor coughing fit. Um, right, where was up to? Um, oh, one thing I did notice while I was having my coffee fit, I had put um, an altered path over there, it was the one that I should have discarded, and I'd left the three remaining ones on there, so I've moved them there, and the one I should have discarded is now over there. Um, anything else? No, I think that is it. Yes. So, not a bad turn one, apart from the fact that uh, we now have the conglomeration of spheres, crawling all over Leo De Luca and we're gonna have to try and get rid of it because we are in a bit of a bind um, It is quite easy to kill as regards, you know, combating it and what is her... the combat of Agnes is two Hmm Yeah, she's only got two combat hasn't she? So she will probably struggle to kill it. Whereas, what's Jenny got? Jenny has got a combat of three. So she may be able to punch it to death. But uh, the problem is, you know, we will lose. Uh, we'll get an attack of opportunity if we put the call up. But uh, I think we'll have to do that. I think she will have to take an attack of opportunity. Or perhaps we can have Agnes go first. And for Agnes's last action, she actually draws the conglomeration of spheres across. Then we could shoot it. Couldn't we? I think. I think that's okay. Let me know. So we might try and do that. We might have Agnes go first. On her third action, she'll draw the conglomeration of spheres to herself, and then that will allow Jenny to get the colt, um, load it up, and start pumping lead into it, baby, because we do have the extra action from Leo. So, as long as the three shots hit, <laughs> we might actually be able to kill it. Do we get plus one? Plus one damage, yes. And it's got six shots, I believe. So actually, we might be able to kill it. Uh, let me know if that works. I'm not sure. I haven't played for a while. You have to let me know. Okay, so that is it for the first turn for um, Where Doom Awaits. I hope you enjoyed it. Took a little bit of getting back into. Um, if I've missed anything, or I could have made a glaring error like I normally do, uh, especially after two months out, I'm a bit out of the swing of actually playing this game. So please let me know if I've made an error as ever, and I'll do my best to fix it. Let me know about the esoteric formula and the other things that I've mentioned. And uh, yes, it's good to be back. Sorry for the long delay. As I said, I've got a new job. Uh, I've got a new shift patterns, and it's uh, a bit difficult for me to do videos now to find the time hopefully i'll be able to do at least one a week um what i might do is like doug herring doug herring has been doing a few video games now i do have time to do video games after a shift because obviously i don't have to spend a load of time setting stuff up and they're a lot easier to record and um i was on a kickstarter for kingmaker pathfinder kingmaker i believe that's out next week and uh, hopefully my copy will arrive. And what I might do is um, just do, because it's role playing, it's like old school role playing, you know, with the, with the little figures and it's all turn based. And what I might do is I might try and stream that um, just to keep the channel ticking over. I know there's probably a load of you there, board gamers going, God, God damn it, video games. I spit on you and your channel. That's fair enough. You know, if you feel the need to unsubscribe, that's fine. But <laughs> but I will make it clear that it is obviously a video game, so you can avoid it. Um, but that's if I can get it all organised and know what I'm doing and, and things like that. So I may do that. Funnily enough, talking of video games, there is the Call of Cthulhu video game coming out. I think that is in October. I will definitely be getting that. So uh, if I do... Put the odd video game on the channel expect to see the call of cthulhu video game which will be nice and creepy won't it but uh, as regards actual board gaming i do need a few hours yeah to set this thing up and um yeah it has to 
you know, the computer itself doesn't record this. I have to record it on a camera and then put it onto the computer if you see what I mean. So that's why video game recording is a little bit easier than board game recording. But it's, again, it's whether I can be bothered, we'll see. However, enough of that wittering about. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. As ever, any mistakes, whatever, please let me know. Thank you to everybody who likes and uh, thumbs up the channel, all that sort of business. Everybody at Board Game Links who upvotes the site over there. Everybody at Board Game Geek who helps out and, uh, you know, makes comments on the video threads there. Thank you so much. It's so much appreciated. And thank you to everybody who commented on my channel update. It was really, really nice, some of the comments that were on there. And um, thank you so much. Um, just, I don't know what to say, really. I'm filling up. So, <laughs> no, there were some very, very kind comments on there. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope to see you next time for the next episode of Arkham Horror, the card game and the Dunwich Legacy, where doom awaits. Can we get up these divergent paths to the ascending path and make our way to the summit of Sentinel Peak and kick Seth Bishop's ass? Because we're going to have to if we want to get to the next scenario where we will have a chance of foiling Yog sothoth But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo!